There you are. Sorry, I wasn't realizing that you were live already. <laughs> and I'm, I'm over here going over emails. And then I was like, oh, wait. Oh, get nice. The founder of the Dominican Conference is doing her work, stuff. doing her thing. Food, I food. Understand. Food for the conference, food. <laughs> Urban is saying, hey, Angie. Hey, how are you? Super proud of you, my friend. Super proud. What's up, Jenny Mamor? Thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm not going. We're not going to keep you all on long because it's late. Everybody's tired. But uh, my name is Alicia Anabel Santos, and I am honored to have. What's up, Maria, my love? I'm honored to to bring you the founder of the Dominican Writers Conference, Angie Abreu so that we could have just a conversation. We're getting really close to the Dominican Writers Conference. We're like a week away. And so we wanted to take some questions, but more importantly, I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to interview Angie um, about some things that we've been talking about privately in terms of the success of a writers conference, when and why a writer chooses to go to a writers conference and what might prevent writers from attending a writer's conference you know what what might be some things you know that that rise for the writer right imposter syndrome or whatever and so i'm just going to start with some questions angie you ready go dale <laughs> cool so let's start with like the the question everybody wants to know why this conference why now why this conference okay um I started Dominican Writers Association about three years ago. And um, as the reason why I started was because I wanted to provide a platform for Dominican writers specifically to support them, to help them market and promote themselves, and, so, and to assist them in reaching the heights of the literary canon, such as Elizabeth Acevedo has. Um, and when I, what I have realized in the last, um, few years since I've been running this organization is that um, our writers are hungry for information and no one and very few people are giving it to them. Um, and that was something that I experienced myself when I was going to these book fairs and to these, um, you know, events. It was just basically a showcase of people, you know, showing off their books or just talking about um, certain topics that didn't necessarily have to do with writing your book and producing your book and selling your book. And those were things that I wanted to do because I wanted to publish a book. And I said, if, if I have these questions, I'm pretty sure that a lot more people do. And, um, and indeed, a lot of people were emailing us, asking us, you know, how do I do this? I, I want to publish. I have no idea how to go about doing this. I don't have any idea where to find an editor. Do I need a literary agent who, who publishes works in Spanish, who publishes works in English? They like people completely lost with the process. So the Dominican writers conference came about and I wanted it to be completely different from other writers conferences where they only have panel discussions. And this conference, I wanted to provide writers with workshops, writing workshops, where they will be able to take a workshop from writing YA, you know. It froze. It froze. It's like you in the third world, Angie. Writing, children's writing, all kinds of writing workshops for the, emer the emerging writer. So, you know, and, and by emerging, I mean people who are just starting to, to write or have written before and aren't and don't know exactly what to do with their writing, but they, they're still curious about it. And also workshops for people who are already a little bit more advanced with their writing. Mm -hmm. I want to just jump right into one of the things that you and I've been talking about on the side, but this idea that people, that there are writers, that there are people who are either early on in their career or even people who are more advanced in their career 
don't find the value. What's up, Cindy, my love? Don't find the value in um, investing in themselves in this way. Why do you think it's important for writers? Do you think that it's important for writers to invest in themselves? And how is this beneficial, this conference, attending a conference like this, useful to them? What can they gain? I think in general, we're not taught to invest in ourselves. Um, and it and it doesn't mean it, it doesn't matter if it's in writing. It doesn't matter if it's you know if it's going to the gym, if it's investing in a better diet, if it's in, investing you know in, in your business or you know it, we're just not taught in general. That is not our culture to to invest in things that would benefit us most of the time we want a discount we want things for free we're i mean we're hagglers even dominicans but i remember you know this is in our nature we will haggle you to bring down but we got price. that 20 dollars for the hookah Get, right Give us a discount. You know, we family. Tu eres primo mío. Tu no me puedes cobrar. Yo, we hung out the other day. You know that I got bills, you know, and such and such. Like, we will haggle you out of something. And and so that takes away from people who are putting in the work and who, and how do I say this, and put a price on their work. Like we're people judge us, you know, when we put a price on our work, people are judging like, why are you so expensive? I can't afford that. Like, who do you think you are? You know, what am I getting mm -hmm. for, for, for this? You know, mm -hmm. um, and I think you and I have spoken about this, that, for example, people will, will complain that they have to pay $15, $25 for a writing workshop. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But. What goes, what preparation goes into giving you a good writing workshop, mm. right? Who, the material, if there's any, like, who is giving you the writing workshop? You know, mm. if you have a professional writer or an MFA um, writer, for example, someone who went to school, you know, who has the degree as a teaching artist to teach you, why is that not valuable? We complain that our teachers don't get enough, right? And it's the same thing. Just because mm -hmm. writing is a creative art right. doesn't mean that it's not valuable. Right. I mean, and it also depends on how serious are you taking yourself as a writer, uh, right? Let's go there. Right? Let's go there. Because if you are taking yourself serious as a writer, you're going to invest. You're going to figure out. Mira, I could give you $50. Could you discount 25 or whatever the case may be? Let's work. And I have people that email me and tell me, and we work something out, you know, because it's not, a, it's not necessarily about the money, but, right. you know, I'm running an a organization and there are costs. Right. There are costs in, in renting a space. There are costs, you know, and maybe people be like, but you don't got to do that, you know, because mm -hmm. también se van por ahí. You don't mm -hmm. have to do that. You do that because you want to. So why I got to pay for it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but it, I think it's just a matter of just changing the culture, the culture. Here goes mm -hmm. my accent. All right, mama. The, the culture. Speaking Spanish, girl. <laughs> um, changing the culture and teaching people that these things do have value and don't disrespect nobody. Like, I find it highly disrespectful when people are like, um, you know, question or judge or whatever. I mean, specifically mm -hmm. because I do a lot of free stuff. Right, right, right. <laughs> right? right. So when I charge you, it's because I have to charge you. Otherwise, the majority of the programming, for example, that we provide is free. Right. And even so, there's still a hesitation to sign up for these for these workshops, right? Listen, so like if we were to break it down, I think it's really important for people to know what they're getting, right? Because we all want to know what we're spending our money on. Yes, like we'll, go, we'll go get yes. that derisado yep. on fleek. We'll go get our eyebrows shaved or, mm -hmm. or you know, threaded, get our nails did. We out there, you know, doing our Cardi B. I don't even know how people, how much people spend on fake nails because I don't do it, but, you know, like crazy. Like $75, stuff. girl. So, so I'm $75. <laughs> and the conference is $75. So let's talk about what they're getting, right? 
what are you getting for the $75? Well, we have 15 workshops and 12 panel discussions. Okay. Okay. By writers, okay. We, we have, you know, these people who are experienced in teaching the art of creative writing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that in itself is valuable. People who most of them are doing this for free, you know? Right, right. So, um, but, you know, we charge because there are expenses associating. Like if people want to see my budget, I can show them. Listen, <laughs> I can tell them listen how that is so not spend. necessary. They could start their own conference <laughs> and see what it is. Well, that's Try to true. rent out they a can start college. Their own conference and figure think, out one of the things I wanted us to one of the things I wanted us to do tonight is to really get people excited about the Dominican Writers Conference to really get excited about Josefina Baez can you talk about our keynote like why her why she's chosen why why this particular person with all of the people that we have who are really like rising to the top now in terms of Dominican American lit Josefina Baez is a badass writer, okay? Mm -hmm. And from the moment that I read her, one of her, one of my favorite books of hers that is called Yo La Dominican York, I realized that she is not your typical writer. Mm -hmm. When you pick up this book, you see English, Spanish, Spanish slang, el tiraje, everything that we are told we're not supposed to write as writers. Or her form is not something that is acceptable by the old school of writers, right? Mm -hmm. So the fact that she has rebelled against these, these groups of people who feel that you need to write in a certain way, you need to conform to certain structure when it comes to writing, that in itself told, teaches me that why can't I write however the hell I want? You know, and her mm -hmm. her book is not translated. She doesn't have footnotes. Si tu lo entiendes, tu lo entendiste. You know, like this is what it is. And I'm mm -hmm. not going to translate it so, you know, you could understand it. You know, and besides that, um, Josefina has, I think she has like 15 books under her belt that people have no idea about. Um, her performances, her theater performances are, are incredible. This is a woman that has been researched and studied. Um, just if you Google her, you will see how much research has been done on her and, and her form of writing. Um, so, and, and I've worked with Josefina before. Um, she has done a, we have done a few events together, so I know um where she's coming from and and how she feels about dominicans and creative writing so we, we have very similar views and mm -hmm. um and i thought that it was about high time that she was acknowledged for all the work that she has done in the dominican writing community i i love in, the, in one of the interview the, the interview that you did um for for the mezcla you talked a lot about her performance art and why that was important to be Oh, that lived. interview isn't out yet. <laughs> well, you know, they don't... Teaser. Can you talk Teaser, a little bit about right? that? Can you talk a little bit about that? What were you... I'm sorry, can you repeat that? About her performance, that, that performance piece, why that's so important as an artist, her being a poet, her being a performance poet. Yeah, I mean, it is just an art form that should be respected. Like, mm -hmm. it, it, and it's not something that everyone can do. And it's just the, the manner in which she, she does it is just, like, I don't know. If you ever see her, hopefully during her, during her panel or keynote, she does a, a little bit of it. But it's just, it, it's incredible. It's something that I can't describe. It's not your, your typical performance poet is not spoken word in the manner that we're used to seeing it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what do you hope that the attendees of the conference leave with what do you what do you hope they gain from this first conference i hope that they gain confidence in themselves that they do away with their fear because 
one thing that I mentioned to you um, before as well was that as Dominicans, we don't have a culture of writing or reading, right? That That mm -hmm. is not something that is encouraged in our um, um, while we're growing up because in the DR, there is no such thing. In the DR, you, there's probably very, a handful of bookstores, right? And people aren't out there reading as voraciously as we do here in the U.S. And, and, and even more so, writing creatively is looked down upon, right? So a lot of people who do write don't do anything with their writing. They hide it. They don't show it to anyone before fear that people are going to make fun of them and tell them, you know, tu no tienes oficio. You, tu, you have nothing better to do than writing little stories or writing little poems or whatever. That is the culture in DR. Okay. So, of course, our parents are going to tell us the same thing when they find out you writing. Why? You know? Mm hmm so I want them to to get into the mindset that it's possible here in the U.S. Um, be confident, let go of the fear, and um, gain the knowledge that you need to take your writing where you want to take it. Right. I just want to provide people with as many options as possible so that they can choose what they want to do with their writing. I, f I feel like if, you know, we place a lot of value, I think a lot of us who were in this culture, a lot of value in conferences that are catered more toward white people, right? Heavily white centric, heavily Anglo centric. Like the one you, you know and I went to recently. <laughs> AWP. <laughs> AWP, we can we talk about we're it. We're like the a token Latinas. <laughs> and listen, listen. We spent over a thousand. We spent over a thousand dollars just to get there, right? right? And present and have a stage for our reading. Like we invested, we invested yeah. to be in this space to say, "Aquí llegamos and you will see us." Yes. Aquí representamos and you will see us. Yes. And you will hear us. But it's not without feeling that imposter syndrome. You are in this sea of whiteness, no. trying to find a place for yourself trying mm -hmm. to make room for yourself. And so, you know, getting back to the conversation when we're talking about this investment and, and really investing in your art and investing in yourself. Like for me, I understand this to be an act of self-love and not just about your craft. This is what you said earlier about taking yourself seriously. My first writer's conference, I had only been writing a few months. Like literally, it was like three months when I went to the San Diego Writers Conference. So that means I flew to San Diego, I play, paid for the conference, I paid for the hotel, and I also had a manuscript review. Can we talk about that too? I think one of the things that we were really sad about is that we didn't fill, we expected to have, have every single editor and consultant fill on the roster by writers, Dominican, Puerto Rican, anyone, African American, anyone attending, because the conference is not just for Dominicans, we vote, we are saying it's for everyone. We didn't fill it. Why, why do you think that is? Um, so we have about seven reviewers. Mm -hmm. And um, I think every single one of them were booked at least twice. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and today, I think in total, we, we counted about... 16 people booked a reviewer mm -hmm. and um i feel i feel that with this conference people are gonna fi find out what a manuscript review is okay. i don't think people are aware mm -hmm. you know i think this is new to them mm -hmm. um and it is now that they're like oh wait like this is possible you know i wasn't aware that that was done you know, till Peggy, who, who's on our planning committee, mentioned to me, and I wasn't, you know, that was new to me, right? We're, so I'm we're... pretty sure that is new to many people. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of the people who are, um, who did book a reviewer were people who probably rushed 
to put a manuscript together, to put at least 10 pages together to get it reviewed. Mm. You know, and if at least they did that, that is wonderful. And I'm hoping that, you know, I, as I'm, this is my first conference. As I'm putting this together, I'm learning so much. I'm learning mm -hmm. about what I want to improve for next year, what I could do differently, how I could promote something differently or better explain mm -hmm. um, and share things mm -hmm. In, in a in a better way and one of those things is the manuscript reviews i want mm -hmm. people to understand what the process is mm -hmm. you know um that you do need to get your stuff reviewed you do need to get your stuff edited because even i've had so many people reach reach out to me that they want to publish but they refuse to have their stuff edited how is that possible, possible. no one is a perfect writer because my people editors, are afraid. My editors need editors. I have five. I have four editors on my team. They need editors because after a while, when you look at the same thing, manuscript over and over again, you miss the mistakes, mm -hmm. right? But there's people who will sit there and argue with me that they don't need an editor. So you know what? This conference is gonna tell you. If I haven't convinced you that you do need an editor, you do, okay. do need to have your manuscript reviewed okay. and you're going to find out whether you do need a literary agent. Where do you find a literary agent? You I think know? that's the, I think that's the hardest thing for many of us. We write alone. We write in this like little writer's nook and we're afraid to let anybody see our work because we're afraid of being rejected at jump. But Look, if you so don't face so those, those fears, you're never going to know. Absolutely. And you could be this close and you're never going to know till you show it to someone. Mm -hmm. For those of you who don't know what a manuscript critique is, a manuscript review, a manuscript review is when an editor or an agent, so a publishing professional looks at your work, they read it and they tell you whether, whether or not a story is marketable right? They, they'll tell you immediately if it's something that could be sold. So that's yeah. the business yeah. side of it. But in terms of like an editor looking at the story, at the concept, they also provide you with feedback about that. So it's yeah. not you meeting yeah. with an editor and they're editing your work. They're actually offering you with some valuable feedback about what it is that you need in order for your work to be published or taken seriously so it's in it's a very valuable service it's it's a scary process i remember when i got my first manuscript um my, actually it wasn't a, the manuscript it was the synopsis it was a synopsis it was a one page critique and it was like a 10 minute conversation where the the editor told me well where there were holes where an idea wasn't developed what I needed to be focused on and why I wasn't ready, which was key because a lot of us aren't ready to hear that. A lot of us want to jump without taking the steps that are required to write a story. And I think when I think about this writer's conference, it's crucial that we learn what it takes to be successful in this industry because it's our job. Yes. I agree. This isn't, some, this isn't some hobby. So, yeah, we're going to I mean, it's not a hobby for us who want to get published. It might right. be a hobby for some other people, and that's okay. But this right, conference right. is to ignite that fire in you Word. and get you moving on your, on your writing. Because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people sitting there who haven't written in months, who haven't done anything with the writing, who do wish to do something with it. Absolutely. So let's take some questions. We got some questions on the, on the feed. Cindy asks, um, well, she says that she's really sad she can't make it this year. She's looking forward to next year. And asks, is there any way to have anything reviewed and not attend the conference? So, good question. Um, so, for one, getting your manuscript review is expensive right which which we have discovered in our research it it sometimes runs in the and that's if you get like a literary agent or a, a editorial consultant you have to pay them a fee 
right? Mm -hmm. um, and that could run you a couple, a few hundred dollars, mm -hmm. right? Um, but another way to have your manuscript review is go to the publishing house that you're interested in. If you're planning, if you are writing a YA novel, look up publishing houses that publish YA. If you're writing fiction, look up publishing houses that one you know one of the most known Harper Collins, um, Scholastic, Penguin, Epic Reads. Um, mm -hmm. Look at the books you read. Look for the publishing houses. Google them and go online and check when they take manuscripts because they don't take them all the time. They do call for manuscripts, and those are the only times that you could submit your manuscript for review. Mm -hmm. And th cool. that's I my that's my suggestion and i think when you go through the publishing houses it's free in that manner i don't believe there's a fee but you do need to respect their um submission process right their guidelines i think cindy was more asking about the editors the, the consultants that we have at this conference right now if they would look at anyone who doesn't attend no and i don't think they would because they're meeting one-on-one -on -one, cindy they're meeting one-on-one -on -one, so they have 15 minute um they have a schedule where they They're meet meeting for 15 minutes with the writer. And they, and they have only agreed to provide the service to conference goers. Yeah. This yep. fee and this service is, has, is only for conference goers. Right. That's all right, Cindy. We're going to be ready next year. We're going to be ready. We're going to be ready. You know, try, try my, my process. Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> we have um, another writer, Ish Mesa, who asks, so who says it would be dope um, to take the basics, basics to basics, like what an outline process would look like, feel like for a first time manuscript writer. Mm -hmm. Get away from my house. Right. I, I agree. Great. I agree. That's great. Um, we'll throw that on the list. So one of the things that I did do for under the manuscript review on the submission request, I did give people um, a link to how to write a query letter and how yeah. to write a synopsis, right? right? And those are things that you could Google. Those are things that you could find on 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 YouTube. You know, mm -hmm. um, all these things are Googleable. <laughs> but, Google we also, but we can yeah. also provide Dominican writers can also provide a workshop on how to do the those basic things if you're more of a hands-on person rather than, you know, someone that would sit in front of a computer and look it up and teach teach yourself. Awesome. The um, other thing I wanted to say about um, the basics to basics of the outline, what I really love about that question is that there are lots of people who offer workshops and there are people who are writing coaches like myself and some of the editors who are listed at the website. It's dwconference.com. Someone also asked um, uh, what the cost was. There are different fees. It's seventy-five dollars general admission. It's twenty-five dollars for senior citizens and college students. College, college students and senior citizens, yes, and free for high school students. And free for high school students. Um, but um, the link is in my bio. The link is in Angie's bio. The link is on the Dominican Writers um, Association IG, Twitter page, Facebook page. So find us everywhere so you can go ahead and get your tickets. Um, Jay Legacy, the conference hey, starts Let at me 9 reply to her. Jay Legacy, so, have you, <laughs> because sometimes it scares me sometimes because I've been sending emails like crazy telling people what time to check in. <laughs> and I've been posting it everywhere. So I'm wondering if she. No, you cannot show up at 7 a.m. So I'm wondering if she's received any of those emails about when our check-in starts. Have you received the emails? Oh, well, the conference is also in New York at City College on May 4th. Right. So just to answer your question, Jay Legacy, the conference <laughs> doors open at 8.30. Okay. But you um, can come at 8.30. Yeah, because we'll be set up. Yes, and if anyone who has registered for the conference is getting emails from me, I have sent two emails. I think this this week alone for the, for the people who have purchased tickets. 
Um, so you sh and I'll be sending one Monday and I'll be sending one Wednesday and I'll be sending one on Friday because I'm very organized. Y no me gusta que la gente me digan a mí, oh, que yo no sabía, que I had no idea, que esto con lo otro. And my email is on all the links. Any questions, email me. Any concerns, email me. Um, um, I answer, I reply real quickly. Um, what was I going to say? Um, we will be serving lunch, so we're not going to starve you. Mm -hmm. um, the program is on our website, dwconference.com. You could download it from the website. You could pick mm -hmm. it up at check-in as well. Mm -hmm. um, what else? So, yeah, you could Bring go your... ahead. You can plan ahead. Plan ahead yes. what you want to attend so you know exactly what you want to attend. Yes, plan, plan ahead. Plan ahead. Um, and there is no um, sign-up days prior to the workshops. Um, right. We have more first than come enough first yeah, yeah. We have more than enough room and and you'll be fine if you, you know, and I'm pretty sure not everyone is going to be there for, for nine o'clock. But if there is a, a early workshop or um, you guys get first dibs, whoever shows up early, because I'm not expecting 300 people at 9 a.m. We would if love to have do, 300 people, though. We would love we, to have 300 would people, though, yo. All 300 people cause come through, but um, I don't know. You know, I gotta be there real early, but to set up and whatnot. But other people might take their time that Saturday. Malafama, you asked a question about um, the one page synopsis. Aside from that, how long should a manuscript be? Is it a complete draft? Do you bring what you have this far? What are the requirements on format? If you're asking about the manuscript critiques for this writers' conference, that deadline has passed. I think that tomorrow is the last day that, that consultants are accepting any manuscripts because they're going to be reading the 10 pages. But in general... No, it's not... Um, tomorrow's not the last... Tomorrow's the 26th? Tomorrow's the 26th. Okay, no. Um, each manuscript reviewer has a different deadline. Yeah. You I have to that. go on the website, dwconference.com. On the top menu, it says manuscript reviews. Click on that. You're going to see seven faces with the price under them. Click on the face. At the bottom, you'll have the submission requirements and the deadline mm -hmm. and what you need to send them. It's all on the website. Um, please, mm -hmm. if their deadline has passed and you want them to review your work, email me. They may make an exception. Otherwise, please do not send them anything prior to finding out whether they'll take your work or not right right um right. we're we're respecting deadlines some of these people have a lot of manuscripts to review and we want to make sure that they have the time to review yours as well um if there if there is someone whose deadline hasn't passed you have to register for the conference because this service is only provided for conference goers and you have mm -hmm. to pay the the service fee the service fee of 45 dollars goes to the reviewer yeah. That is your payment to the reviewer for reviewing your manuscript. It is not paid at the conference. It is not paid in cash. You have to book it via the website. Mm -hmm. Malapama, the, um, all of the consultants, it says exactly what the requirements is. So it'll tell you font. It'll tell you how many pages. It'll tell you their email. It gives you everything. And what genres they review. And that's very important. Only pick someone that actually is interested in reading your genre so you i believe your fiction and your poetry so really pick those people who who want to read those who are looking for that work they they're looking for those writers but i'm with i'm and on most here tonight of them are to really in encourage you what and most Go of ahead. them are reviewing manuscripts in english except for one reviewer which is marcela she's reviewing spanish work For those people um, who want to um, submit anything in Spanish. Uh-huh. Cool. Um, so in general, I mean, it just, it just depends. I know that a lot of like, for this, a lot of people, it's 10 to 20 pages that our critiquers are taking, right? Um, 10 yes. to 20 pages. So it depends on some are reading 10 and some are reading 20. Yes. 
So I don't by remember case, off the top of my head, but you'll me have either. to go on the, but it's on the site. Have to go on the website and look at what the requirements are. In general, in outside the conference, I don't know what they are. But because mm-hmm. um because they need to review so many, they don't ask you for the entire manuscript. There are people who may ask you for your entire manuscript for them to review it. Because sometimes, for example, we at Dominican Writers, when we publish somebody, we ask them for the entire manuscript. We can't do 10 to 20 pages. And it's because people, we can't review something that's not done. You know? That's how, that's how the publishing world feels. They want something that's ready. Right. That's been workshop, that's been read, that's been edited, that's yes. clean. So this manuscript review is a wonderful opportunity for someone to look at maybe your first 10 pages, your first 20 pages and say, you have a really tight story. I want to see more. This is, yeah, this is like a test run. This is a wonderful test run. So for those of you who want to do it, yo, for those of you who want to do it, get on it now, yo. The conference is next week. You know, and, and don't be intimidated. Let's say that your first 10 pages are shit. Come and get guidance. Like, I like to think that as a writer, we are always looking to become better writers. Mm-hmm. So what, why not come and put ourselves out here in that way? Does anyone else have any, que- any more questions for Angie? We're a week away. There's still time to register. Share it with your friends. Come with last your day to regi- The last day to register is May 3rd. And we are not collecting money at the door. We can't pay at the door because we are not going to have um, accessibility. Does anyone have any questions about the conference, about the workshops, about the panels? So just know, everyone, we have panels on fiction, on memoir, on poetry, on film, on journalism, on the industry. There's a panel with the editors, which is going to be a really dope Yes, that's the last one of the most important the day, ones to go to. The mm-hmm. last panel of the day is on um it's on with publishers and literary agents and editors who dope. will be answering your questions. Like what opportunity will, will you have to, have to who do will that? walk you through the process of submitting to a publisher and getting a literary agent and we'll also have a Q&A so for you to be able to ask them the questions that you need answers to. Word up. Yay. Well, thank you all for joining us. You guys are amazing. I know it's late. Everybody's tired. Angie, thank you so much for taking time because I know your little man is like, yo, what, what's good? What about me? Because you know. He don't care. He's over here playing his PlayStation. <laughs> Not paying mind to me. I hope y'all can make it come. It's okay, Cindy. Cindy, that's all right. We got you next year, Mama. You're not missing it. You're gonna be ready, girl. You're getting that book published. Family, know that one of the reasons Angie's doing this is because she wants you, and I will speak for you, Angie, to feel seen. For you to remember that your story matters. We matter. That's if this conference achieves anything. It's for us to feel like we have a place where our story matters. And so come, come and get loved on, come and get Which crazy is one of the reasons info. we called it Dominicanish. Right. You know, <laughs> which alludes to the fact that we're not Dominican enough when we are in the U.S. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, we're not American enough when we are in the U.S. And we're not Dominican enough when we out. Uh, are in our home country and Mm -hmm. you know the the writing world looks at us like you know you're not dominican if you're not writing in spanish right you know or if you're not writing in a certain manner that you you shouldn't be called a writer if you haven't read certain texts like i had this one guy who told me that that he was insulted when a writer told him that they couldn't read um, a hundred years of solitude. I'm like, I can't read a hundred years of solitude. That is not my favorite book. I was not able to get through that book. It's not my genre of interest, but I read everything else. I devour everything else. So, you know, and those are the people who are high and mighty in the writing world who makes us feel like 
our stories don't matter but fuck it our stories do matter and we're yes. gonna write it however the hell we want to write them and they're gonna get published gotcha. yay word family thank you so much for joining us angie thank you so much for email me info. info at dominicanwriters.com if you have questions link yes. in my bio yes follow angie stay connected get your ticket get your ticket let's go we'll see